Now let's continue our discussion of FM bandwidth by discussing wideband FM. Okay, so with frequency modulation, we have a modulated signal that looks like this. And for narrowband FM, we showed that we could keep approximately the same bandwidth as an amplitude modulated signal but we needed to keep the constant kf very small. We needed to keep it much, much smaller than one. So going back to this frequency modulated signal, we can see that the instantaneous frequency is given by this expression where we have the carrier frequency plus some constant kf multiplied by the message. So the FM, the FM modulates the instantaneous frequency. So if we keep the constant kf small, then the instantaneous frequency is not going to change very much in our FM modulated signal. So if the instantaneous frequency doesn't change very much, how can we recover the message MT? Well, we can see in blue, we have a large constant KF, but as we make the constant KF smaller in red, we can see that the instantaneous frequency plot, the second one from the top, is going to have much less variation in the instantaneous frequency. Then at the very bottom, we have two plots, one that shows the frequency modulated signal for a large value of KF, and one in red that shows a frequency modulated signal for a small value of KF. Now, even with these two numbers, it's quite clear to see that in the blue plot for the frequency modulated signal, there's a much bigger change in the frequency that's visible on the graph. But when we choose a small value of KF, we have almost no change that's visible to our eyes in the frequency. So this means it's going to be harder to recover the message, right? So with blue, we can see that the instantaneous frequency is changing a lot in the instantaneous frequency plot. But in red, the red one is barely changing. It's changing a lot less than the blue. And because of that, it's going to be a lot harder to recover the message MT when we have a small value of KF. So maybe we can't just yet assume that KF is going to be very small. So we can't make, we might not be able to make the assumptions that we made for narrow band FM and still be able to recover our message. So if we can't make that assumption, that means that we're going to have to go back to our uh, expression containing power series for the frequency modulated signal that looked like this. So let's go back to this and start over and see if we can come up with another expression for bandwidth that's more suitable for a wideband FM signal. A wideband FM signal is a signal where KF is not necessarily a very small number. Okay, so let's consider some message that looks like this. Uh, it contains some information and we can approximate this message using some kind of staircase method. So we'll break it up into little chunks, just like this, and each little chunk uh, is going to represent part of the message as a staircase. And so we could take the entire message and represent it looking like a staircase. Now each one of these cells, or chunks, we'll call them cells, is going to have a width of 1 over 2b, where b is the bandwidth of the message. And each one of these cells is, is like a pulse that is approximating the message. And each pulse has a maximum width of one over 2b, and that's due to the Nyquist interval. So if we take the top of this staircase signal, and we'll show it in purple, we'll call it uh, m hat of t, and this is going to be the approximate message. So this approximate message basically was broke up the message using, into cells and approximates it using the staircase. Each one of these pulses, each one of these cells is going to have a constant amplitude in the approximation, and it's going to be easier to analyze than the actual message, which is continuous. So each one of these cells we can break down, and let's say that we are looking at some cell. We'll call this cell the kth cell, so cell k, and it's going to start at some time t sub k. And because each width, each cell width is 1 over 2b, the cell is going to go in time from tk to tk plus 1 over 2b. For any given point in this message approximation, m hat, for the interval from tk to tk plus 1 over 2b, 
the amplitude is going to be m of tk. So let's recall that frequency modulation modulates the instantaneous frequency. So if we ha wanted to find the instantaneous frequency for this cell, this k cell, we can take the instantaneous frequency at time tk. So that's going to give us the carrier frequency plus constant kf times m's m of tk, which is the amplitude at cell k. So for each pulse, we can do this. And for this cell k, the entire cell is going to have a constant frequency. So the instantaneous frequency for cell k, which lasts from tk to tk plus 1 over 2b, is going to have a constant frequency that's given by the value of the top of that staircase. So for the interval starting at tk, the kth cell in tk, we could break this up in the frequency domain and say that this cell is going to have some instantaneous frequency that's constant for this entire period. Now we uh, can see that our, for our approximation of the frequency modulated signal, for this cell, we're going to have cosine of the instantaneous frequency at time tk. And that could be further broken up um, as the carrier frequency plus the constant kf times the message value at tk. All right, so if we have a whole message that's approximated by this staircase, there's going to be a large number of cells. So we just looked at some arbitrary cell k, but there's going to be many of them. And remember, we're trying to find the bandwidth for this entire message signal. So I think we're on the right track because we've just shown that for one of these cells, cell k, we can figure out what frequency, what constant fre instantaneous frequency it's going to have and we can figure out that uh, what the bandwidth is. So now we are on the right track. We just need to look at every single one of these cells, and there's going to be a cell with the highest frequency, the highest constant frequency, and there's going to be a cell with the lowest constant frequency. The bandwidth is going to stretch from that low frequency to the high frequency. So let's continue by looking at this. So by going back to our approximation, let's keep on looking at this, and let's, let's see that each one of these cells can be broken up and we can find the instantaneous frequency that's given for each one of these cells. So for the first cell, we can see that the instantaneous frequency is a little bit lower than cell K and the cell above cell K is gonna have a little bit higher instantaneous frequency. So if we break this all up, we're gonna have some approximate uh, frequency modulated signal and it's going to, to be divided up in time by our cells K that have a width of 1 over 2 bandwidth. And each one of these cells is going to have a different, slightly different, constant instantaneous frequency. And this is all based on this staircase model, which breaks up the continuous message into a uh, discontinuous staircase message. Okay, so how can we find the bandwidth of a time domain signal? We have an approximation of this time domain frequency modulated signal that's above, and our approximation is an approximation that has many different cells. Each one has a different instantaneous frequency. So how could we find the bandwidth of a time domain signal like that? Well, as you remember, we can use the Fourier transform. But this approximate frequency modulated signal is going to be a little bit too complicated for an analytical Fourier transform. So, in the next video, we're going to look at what we can do about this.